I invite you to all stand for the gospel reading from John's gospel, the holy gospel according not to Luke, sorry Luke, but from John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man that he had just raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him, with Jesus. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard that was used to anoint kings. And she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas, the disciple who would soon betray Jesus, said, that perfume was worth a year's salary. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that Judas cared for the poor, for he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole for himself. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We pray the prayer of the day together. Loving God, you provide for us. Lead us, comfort us, celebrate us, and seek us out with grace. Embolden us to respond to your love with acts of service in our families and workplaces communities and schools, so that all might experience the freedom of living in your house forevermore. Amen. Well, oh, there he is. Ah, uh, sorry, Pastor, I think I might have napped through that first part. Oh my goodness, there's always a napper in church. It used to be me when I was a kid. Well, Charlotte, how are you doing today? Not younger than you though. So I would fall asleep under the pew. Kind of in that second or third pew, but not here. Different church. Pews are pews. So, Pelly, do you like pizza? <laughs> do I like pizza? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Of course, Pastor, I love pizza. My favorite kind of pizza uh, has anchovies and green olives on it. Oh, Ooh, my yummy. gosh. What do you think about that? Oh, have you ever had an anchovy? It's a weird dried up little fish that's real stinky. Olives? Okay, well, we're, we're, we'll meet you halfway. You can do a half and half, maybe. Yeah, it's quite a pizza. We'll, we'll have to all order it sometime, although I'm not real big on olives. But I'm glad you like to share. You know, sharing, I need some help again with our decoder. It's a glorious mystery because I can't find my decoder glasses. They're, oh, they're in my car, then I think they're actually in the pew today. But I don't have them here. And if you don't have them, like you, it's really hard to tell what the, the clue is. Do you think you can help? I can try. Okay, well, I'm gonna read the little poem. We'll see if we can figure it out. After the Lord shared a meal, he led his friends away up to the mount of hmm that was where he went to pray dear father jesus prayed it's hard to do what i must do but i will do it faithfully because you want me to when he was done he found his friends beneath the hmm trees they were asleep pelly they were asleep wake up he said They've come, the soldiers come to capture me. We're gonna be hearing about this story, especially in Holy Week, so in about a week and a half or so, but we gotta figure out the Mount of blank and beneath the blank trees. I can't tell what that is. I don't know, a cherry tree? Maybe, 
What do you think that is? Uh, I think that's an olive tree. Oh, the olive mount. Olive trees? I think they do. Do olives grow on trees or do they grow on the ground? They grow on trees, well, right? Trees. Yeah. Okay. I've got a final we, on that. that's, a, that's a Googleable question. <laughs> We're going to say they grow on trees because doesn't that look like it's a tree with little leaves? I thought so. That's see, why I asked. Okay. See, that's why we have Pelly here. And Jesus taught them to, tr to pray to God under these beautiful trees. And if you go to this area in Israel, you can still see some of those trees that are there today. Should we, should we have a prayer? Pelly, do you think we should pray? Of course. Any prayer concerns today? Not today. Okay, well let's pray everyone. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for Pelly. We give you thanks for friends. We give you thanks for clues that you drop in and around us all the time. Clues that remind us of your love, of your life, and how you are in our lives today. I give you thanks for Charlotte and all the kids here, the kids in the world, and for puppets like Pelly that help us grow in faith, and for families and friends and congregations too that help us along the way. Amen. Amen. All right, Pelly, next week, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. So we got some palms back there. We're going to be waving them around and having a parade. I hope you like parades. Love parades. Excellent. Well, it's going to be better than last year when we froze driving around waving palms out of our cars last year. And, I don't know if you. And your, my dog. I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember. We that. had some interesting dog experiences, too. So. Must have eaten an anchovy pizza. Yeah, I think so. We'll see. Well, thank you, Pelly. We'll see Bye, you next everyone. week. Thanks, Charlotte, for helping. I invite us all to read Psalm 23 together. We're reading from the International Children's Bible. And we're doing this again every Sunday in worship. We read from a different variation, a different version of the Bible. And we hear this very well-known Psalm differently. So let's read this as our prayer together. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength. For the good of his name, he leads me on paths that are right. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your shepherd's staff comfort me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I love that one verse. You give me more than I can hold. I just That's a beautiful image. God giving us so much, it just... You know, it just piles up in our life, the goodness, the blessings. Last week, if you were here, I was telling you about a skit at camp, a summer camp years ago, where the counselors were enacting Psalm 23. And one was dressed as King David. And he said, surely your goodness and love, God, will be with me all of my life. And surely, goodness and mercy, three other um, counselors that had their names, surely, goodness and mercy, chased King David all around, went through a door called the Lord's house, and they all kind of crashed into each other, gently, not like violently, and just all heaped on top of King David in laughter and hugs. It was to help the kids realize that God pursues us, that God pursues us no matter who we are, what we are enduring, what we have endured, what we have done, and what we will do, knowing that we are sinful people, knowing that we have failures and fractures in our communities, in our lives, and knowing that God still pursues us with love, with mercy, 
Does anyone remember the, the Hebrew word? Yes. Oh, Hesed. Jackie, was that you? Wow, good. My glasses got foggy. You get the gold star. Hesed. It doesn't translate well in English, but it is loving faithfulness that almost sticks to us. Like we can't undo it. And we might say, well, that's grace. And the question then is, now what? We are saved by God's grace through what? Our faith. That's a real big Lutheran tenet. We respond with faith, not just to say, I believe in God. I believe God. I believe that I am saved. I believe that God is in this world and the kingdom is breaking into our community. And when we look, when we act with kindness, when we get out of our comfort zone, sometimes that's what Lent does to us, we can actually see the goodness and mercy, the grace of God breaking into our world. And boy, does our world need it. We heard in the New Testament reading from the Gospel of John today, we heard about Mary, who does this very peculiar thing. She takes a, a year, now just think about whatever your salary is for a year, and she uses that money to purchase and to use like a, an essential oil, we'll just call it that, that was used to anoint kings or a person who would be the king. The whole body was just covered in this beautiful oil. The whole aroma would just fill the entire sanctuary or house. And Mary, whose brother Lazarus had died, just a few days earlier, Jesus called out to Lazarus' tomb, said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. And Mary understands what grace is. That resurrection triumphs over all that God doesn't leave us in our graves, whether it's physical or metaphorical, that God is always with us, leading us, guiding us, as the Psalm says, like Mary gets it. And so she goes to his feet and pours this oil all over his feet. Judas, of course, has a problem with this. And he says, what is happening here? Maybe Judas just didn't understand grace at that point in time. Judas gets a bad rap a lot of times. But it doesn't mean that God's goodness and mercy didn't pursue Judas as well. But Mary in that moment, seeing her brother around this meal in honor of Jesus, gets it. And her heart is so convicted that she goes to the Lord and anoints him. And usually that was a job for a priest or a prophet. And here it is, a woman in Israel, 2,000 years ago, unheard of. And she doesn't care. Because her faith has moved her to take an action, a great act of gratitude. In that moment, her life was changed. She would be the one who would be under the cross of Jesus as he was dying. She would be one of the first women at the tomb three days later after his death who discovered that where is the Lord? I don't know, but she would be the one who would take the news that he is risen and share it with the men who still were trying to understand grace like so many of us. Her life was changed. Gratitude and expressions of gratitude were right there. And I think that's something at the end of this psalm and taking Mary's action of gratitude that we can kind of chew on and meditate on and pray on and think about when and how does God's grace convict me to say, I believe? And I am capable of gratitude each and every day, in every moment, and not just for things, right? We can say, oh, I have a family, I have a car, I've got food. Yes, it's great to have gratitude. But for the difficult moments that we find ourselves in, there is Christ. There is Christ in suffering. 
There is Christ in Ukraine. There is Christ in our offerings. There is Christ when we volunteer, when we stock a food pantry, when we volunteer at just one more ministry. That is expressions of gratitude for every moment. There isn't a day, not to, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I do this a lot, like, Char, I'm so bored, <laughs> right? Oh, it's April, it's raining, it's so bored. Like, just stop, just, th you ha are taking a breath that the Holy Spirit is giving you. There are neighbors that you can talk with, that you can be with. After this two years of being in seclusion, basically, gratitude and thanks and being generous and being grateful, praying with our family, serving with our family, being grateful even for the challenges that we have because Christ is in them. And we will see that on Good Friday and we will see it triumph with the good news that Jesus gives life and is the way and the truth and life on Easter. Every Sunday is a, little, is a little Easter Sunday. I know the big one's coming up, but this is what propels us to take actions of gratitude and to be thankful today and every day. So if you've been doing some spiritual practices, there's newsletters in the back by, by Rick, you can grab one and kind of see what the instructions are for this week. It might be just starting to write out something you're grateful for and carrying it in your pocket and look at it throughout the day and just say, thank you, God. Maybe it's just a quiet prayer. You can do it at school, you can do it at work, on a walk, whatever. Or maybe it's actually then even saying, what can I do? with my family, with my friends, with grandchildren, whoever it might be, to show God's grace in the world through our gratitude and our relationships with each other. Thanks be to God. Amen.